Richard, we're back recording again uh, after a, a few weeks off. Weeks? Yes. A long been, hiatus. It, it, it has felt like a we very didn't, long... We did not, however, take a summer vacation. We didn't. No. Um, we did, it was not a planned or scheduled right. uh, time off, but it was uh, a couple of weeks that we haven't recorded. That's right. And we are glad to be back. We are. Right? Um, why did we take so much time? Well, well there's so much going on. There's, we really do have so many things going on right now. Right. Getting new doors. Yes. That took <laughs> all day instead of an hour. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There, there have been things happening here in our office and things happening in our in our lives that have uh, interfered with our, our recording schedule. Right. Uh, but we are back in, in the studio today recording and um, hopefully we'll be back uh, <laughs> recording uh, into the foreseeable get a, future. Get on a regular schedule. That's right. right. Um, but the, the time that we've had off, we've had some things, as I said, we've had some things happening in our personal lives right. that have um, made it a little bit difficult to get in and record. Um, but those things that happened in our personal life brought up a particular topic that we would love to discuss today. That's right. And at the risk of disclosing too much, um, we had a death in our family. And um, these kinds of family traumas, mm -hmm. And it was a uh, uh, it was a trauma mm -hmm. in the family. Uh, these kind of family traumas uh, sometimes they bring out the best in people and they bring out the worst in people. Yes. And w uh, several several times on uh, on these podcasts we've talked about holidays. Right. You know how um, how holidays they bring families together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another time when you can bring out the best and the worst right. in people. You know, some people rise to the occasion and are pleasant and fun and enjoyable. Other people use those family events as a time to show their less desirable qualities. Yeah. Right. Say. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so family traumas, um, uh, loss of a loved one, is also one of those times when um, you can bring out the best in some people and the worst in some people. Right. And as with most families, <laughs> my mine too has a tendency to behave well and to behave badly, yes. and um, we had one of these. One of the events that uh, Dr. Bernie's talking about is um, one of the events that that uh, caused us to postpone or reschedule our podcast was the death in my family, and um, it has it has brought out the best and worst in some of my siblings. Yes. to be very blunt about it. To be very blunt about it. Yes. So we had many discussions um, yeah. during this time of of grieving and discussing it and mourning. Um, Dr. Bernie and I had many discussions about the behavior of family members and how it's typical. Right. You know, the, the behavior yeah. of my family is typical of most families. Yeah, we, we had, we've things. had some, fam um, some losses in our family, mm -hmm. uh, my family, over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing happened. Right. Yeah. They, 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 uh, and so the discussion we kept having was, why do people act this way? Right. And, and one of the discussions that we got into in my family, because of uh, my, my uh, professional uh, because of my work, was is it mental illness? Are, right. are we looking? Is this per, is this relative mentally ill? Is this relative just grieving it differently than we are? Um, what is the explanation for why people start to behave in sometimes bizarre ways? Right. You know, uh, not a not necessarily atypical for them, but certainly exaggerated. Right. And are we looking at a mental illness, or are we looking at something else? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and it, it raises important questions because. You know, when it, when you're thinking about whether something is a mental illness versus, you know, just somebody, whether somebody's just being a jerk or they're ha mentally and that's, ill. That's the way we kept talking about it. Right. Is she just being? Is this person just being a jerk? You know, is it, it just bad behavior? Right. Or is there something underneath that that's right. fundamentally wrong? Right. Hmm? Right. And, and so, as Dr. Marshall has been saying, we, we've we've had these discussions many mornings over the last couple of weeks, um, talking about some of these issues because. They are present in every family, right. um, mm -hmm. and and so we thought we would have a discussion a little bit today about the difference between two uh, two key words that, that we right. that we have that we really like. <laughs> we, um, yeah, they caps they encapsulate uh, the discussions. We've had many many discussions over several hours over the past two weeks, and in, and these two words really encapsulate and capture right. what we've been talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. So the words are egocentric, and Ego dystonic, right? Okay, so ego syntonic and ego dystonic, right? And and those are the two words that we're going to kind of focus mm -hmm. on uh, today. And, and those words are are usually referred to or usually used in reference to uh, differentiating personality, mm -hmm. um, characterological uh, uh, behaviors, and 
mental illness or disorders. Right. That's right. Um, so egocentonic are characterological things. These are personality uh, characteristics. And then egodystonic would be things that are more disorder, um, uh, mental, mental health, mental illness based. Right. Uh, and one of the things we might, we might add is that in the book that we use, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, most of that book is devoted to mental illness. Right. Okay, and, and clearly more than half of it. Right, what they refer to as clinical disorders. That's right, yeah, depression, right. anxiety, um, schizophrenia. There's a little section of that book, uh, just a, a tiny fraction of the book is devoted to the personality disorders. Right. They're still considered mental, mental disorders, yeah. but they are of a different class. Right. And when Dr. Bernie talks about characterological disorders, mm -hmm. they're more about who you are right. rather than do you have the symptoms. You know, right. Are you mentally ill or do you have a personality disorder? Right. You know, do you have a mental illness right. or do you have a personality disorder? And that's an important distinction. And so what, what we're beginning to move toward is egosyntonic mm -hmm. and egodystonic match with mental illness or personality disorder. Right. Right. So, so a quick, um, a quick definition okay. perhaps, for, the, yeah. for the two terms. Right. So, egocentonic. Uh, egocentonic is is a situation in which a person behaves in a particular way, has certain behavioral characteristics, emotional characteristics, but they don't see anything wrong with the way that they feel uh, or the way that they behave. Egocentonic in the personality disorders, but we see that in personality. In general, in general um, right. even healthy personalities. You know, when you when you see the world in a particular way, it's really difficult for you to appreciate that somebody may see the world in a very different way. That's right. Um, you know, when you see videos of, of people in other countries suffering or people within this country suffering, and you feel badly for that, it's really difficult to imagine that there's people out there that can see those same images and not be affected by them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that those are that, those are egocentric traits. Because so egocentric is, I just have these things. Right. Uh, this there's is just the way wrong. everyone thinks. Uh, every, I'm like everybody else. Right. I'm like everybody else. Everybody right. thinks this way. Everybody right. has these little things, mm -hmm. and there's really nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. It's just who I am. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is where they, um, you know, especially when you get into the personality disorders, it creates a problem because if you believe that this is the way everyone else believes. Then when somebody says that there's something wrong with what you're thinking, right. or there's something wrong with the way that you're behaving, or when you notice that somebody else isn't behaving the way that you do, mm -hmm. it creates a conflict. Right. Simple example. Um, narcissism right. is a personality disorder. Right. Okay. It can be. Um, but if you tell a narcissist, if you say to somebody who, a narcissist believes that this is the way people are. Right. Everybody else is like this. Yeah. So I am. There's nothing wrong with me. Um, and so uh, Freud said, the only says again, uh, clearly there's something wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So press of episode mm -hmm. or something like that is happening. You're experiencing um, egodystonic symptoms. Mm -hmm. That means that you are recognizing that this is not the way that you typically feel right. and you don't like it mm -hmm. and you want to change it. And so and, we typically right. refer to those as those clinical disorders that we were talking about earlier. Right. Yeah. That's the, those are the things that create, as you say, discomfort, right. and you want to do something. You, right. you know that there's something wrong and you want to do something right. about it. It will motivate you to get to a therapist mm -hmm. or to, to seek treatment somewhere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so um, and, and that's the case with all of the mental health conditions, mental illness mm -hmm. uh, conditions, so from depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. as we've talked about, but also ADHD or schizophrenia. The person may not you know, fully recognize that they're experiencing that at the time, but at some point they recognize man, this is not good. Something, I need to do something about this. Something's wrong somewhere. Right. Even mm -hmm. the kid with ADHD um, is at risk for developing anxiety or depression right. or some you know, negative self-image symptoms because they recognize mm -hmm. that they are different or they um, can't do some of the things that other kids can do right. or they're not fully capable of expressing themselves fully the way that they know that they should be able to mm -hmm. um, because of their symptoms. And right. so that, those are egodystonic <clears throat> uh, symptoms mm -hmm. and traits. Right. So when we have these these two, egocentonic um, means that you you know you don't see anything wrong with anything; everything is just fine. Egodystonic means that there's some distress. When we have these kinds of family traumas, family um, emergencies, even holidays, and, and yeah. you know it could be family celebrations, 
It could it could be a happy event too. Right. You know, right. a wedding, for example. Right. It, it might be a joyous event, about, uh, the birth of a child, yeah. or a wedding, or an anniversary, some kind of celebration. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a, a sad, tragic, right. traumatic event. It could be a, a happy event. Right. It brings out the same things. Because the, the key there is that if if there's someone with some of it, because we all have these egocentric traits, mm -hmm. we we all have those. Right. You know, even if we don't have egodystonic traits, we mm -hmm. all have egocentric traits. Um, so there are those with those problematic <laughs> egocentric traits, and those things are going to emerge during those family events. Right, stress. It's the diathesis Absolutely. stress. You know, as soon yeah. as you introduce stress into it, then mm -hmm. these characteristics tend to get exaggerated. Right. Mm -hmm. So think about that time. Um, it, again, it could be a holiday, it could be a, a, a celebration, or it could mm -hmm. be a trauma, where you're sitting there and everything seems to be just fine. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then all of a sudden there's that you know uncle who. <laughs> always has to throw in that little comment, always has to make that little statement mm -hmm. that, that gets somebody riled up uh, or gets something happening uh, to get make some right. people frustrated. Mm -hmm. That's an egocentric trait, most likely. That's an egocentric yeah. trait within that uncle. He's not, he doesn't know that, the, he doesn't recognize that there's anything wrong with what he's doing. It's just, hey, this is something, we're all together. This is something that we should be talking mm -hmm. about because mm -hmm. this is a problem or this is an issue or I need to address this for some reason. And he, He's not necessarily, um, you know, anticipating that there's going to be this big fight or this big right. argument or anything like that. It's just that's who he is. That's what he's going to do, and he behaves that way. And, and stuff, stuff in, in our situation happens. In our recent um, loss, we had a family member who clearly doesn't believe that there's anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's a her. Okay. Yeah. So there's anything wrong with her. Right. But she behaved in a way that created chaos for everybody else. Yeah. She didn't she wasn't doing anything wrong. Right. No, I'm not she I'm thought not, she was being helpful. I mean helpful. I'm doing all these things, yeah. I'm doing all these wonderful things. In the meantime, she's creating chaos for the entire family. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and that's what we're talking about with right. nothing wrong with her, right. but it creates chaos for everybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. And and, and Everyone else is left to to address it, and then when you address it to, you know, in that case, her specifically, very defensive, yeah. and and you know, sometimes they will, uh, sometimes they will fight back, sometimes they will, you know, uh, just disengage and escape and run away. And you're going to get either passive resistance mm -hmm. where they will just withdraw and ignore and get angry, and or they'll be become actively resistant, yeah. and they'll argue with you, yeah. or they'll push back, sometimes quite forcefully, because they really do believe that there's nothing wrong. Right. There's nothing wrong with them. Right. Okay? And they're just doing what they believe is needs to be done or what they want to do to manage their right. grief. Because usually what they believe is that what they're doing is what's the right thing to do. Right. That's right. right. So, mm -hmm. so when you then try to stop them or you try to tell them that what they're doing is problematic, they're going to get defensive and they're going right. to be upset about that because what do you mean that this is wrong? Of course, everyone else is feeling this way. So we, I need to do this so that we can um, work through this. Everybody should be doing what I'm doing. Absolutely. Right. So, so this is where um, now we may we may want to get into another issue here, and that is the jerk, right? Because we've Where been talking about personality disorder, yeah, and mental illness, mm -hmm. okay. But there's a gray area here. Right. Occupied by jerks, right? Okay, and I don't know what else. They're occupied by people who are not mentally ill, right? It's it's a it's a piece of real estate that's occupied by people who are not mentally ill, mm -hmm. who don't don't have a mental illness, right? Nor do they truly have a personality disorder, right? And, and yeah, these 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 are folks who it's not their it's not really a personality trait, meaning that they are egocentric. And they exactly. don't recognize. There are those who are jerks who behave, who act out because they want to act out. Do, and they know they're acting out? And they know they're acting out, right. So they know they're causing a little trouble, right. but they don't care. We call them jerks. Or that, or that we, I have a right to express exactly. myself. Okay? Exactly. I have a right to express myself, even if it's offensive. And, and they will say <clears throat> that, right? They'll say, mm -hmm. I don't care if it hurts your feelings. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say it anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and you think, well, there's you know a dozen other ways to say it. Right. But you're going to choose to say it that way. Well, I'm going to say it the way that I want to say it. Right. 
And the other motiv motivating factor is some people say, well, my family doesn't respect, they don't respect anything I say. They don't mm -hmm. respect my opinion. And, um, and there's this sort of angry undercurrent mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in what they're doing. And by golly, I'm gonna express myself. This year I'm really gonna unload on everybody right. because I've been wronged all these years. That's not a mental illness. That's right. not a personality disorder. Mm -hmm. It is a quality. Yeah. And they occupy this real estate. Right. Um, right in between. Right in between those two things. Yeah. Okay. And, th and so there's a third element at work right. with egocentonic and egodystonic. Right. Yeah. Everything is not, <coughs> very few things in life are binary. Right. Where there's just one or, one or the other. Um, mm -hmm. So you have this egodystonic, you have egocentonic, and then you right. have this gray area in between of people who, you know, it is just who they are. Right. Right. Um, but they are, um, Provocative um, and, and that mm -hmm. evoke um, emotion in others intentionally, with the, with the knowledge that they're right. doing it um, intentionally. Yeah, or at least they're going to get revenge. Right. They're going to get even. Right. right. I'm, I'm going to have yeah. my time. I'm going to I'm going to have my time now. I'm going to take my turn and offend others and as it, I have been offended. Right, and it could be with the goal of inciting others. Right. You know, I, I you know they want to make other people upset. You know, right. we we see this with. You know, parents certainly do it a lot. If if their kid does something that upsets them, you know, they want to find a punishment that hurts the kid as much as they've been hurt. Right. You know, they'll say, "Well, you know, I got to punish him um, in a way so that he really feels it." Right. Um, that's that's tough. Well, if if you use punishment that way, right, you know, instead of changing behavior, you want to get even. Right. You know, so. But but it's you, you see this in the in that family dynamic that, right. that we're referring to with, with the celebrations and other family get togethers mm -hmm. where someone will say, you know, um, well I'm just we've heard people say, I'm just trying to get get something get a rise out of her right. or get a rise out of him. Right. Um, just upsetting. That's right. Not a mental illness. Right. So so <clears throat> you know, school's about to start. Well, we have a couple of things coming up. Yeah. Number one, school's about to start. Yeah. Football season is about to start. In That's the right. South, you know, we live in the Southeast, so football season is, is the other religion, the other major religion. Um, but also, the holidays are coming. Right. You know, soon, very soon, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, mm -hmm. Hanukkah, they'll be upon us, mm -hmm. and all it will bring all of this out right. in stark relief. So as you approach this uh, time of the year, the second half of the year, where we have all these celebrations, um, keep this in mind. Yeah. That, uh, what do you? What am I really dealing with? Give it. Give it some thought. What am I really dealing with here? Because you want to be able to act, react, uh, responsibly and, and appropriately. Absolutely. To the behavior it's, of others. So you don't get pulled into it. Yeah. You don't get um, sort of drawn into this uh, conflict that's unnecessary. Um, that is um, and unproductive. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Hurricane prevention. Exactly. You know, that's, we're also in hurricane season. Hurricane here. preparedness, and you want to stay out of the hurricane. You know, you you don't want to get, as you say, you don't want to get drawn into that right. maelstrom, and all that agony and and arousal and right. anger and emotions. So step back, try to figure out what you're really dealing with here, and um, act and react appropriately. Yeah. So as you can tell, we have uh, we have been thinking about this a lot, and we have mm -hmm. been dealing with with some of these things a lot over the last couple of uh, weeks. And so we really wanted to get in and talk about this and, mm -hmm. and have an opportunity to share with everyone uh, some of these concerns. Right. Hope so, it helps. All right. So yes. definitely. So until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Mm -hmm.